We're back in a temporary new space um, talking about the six lines of attraction. This is part two. In part one, I covered lines one, two, and three. Now we're going to talk about lines four, five, and six. And as a reminder, the sphere of attraction is what calls in what your soul needs to learn and to grow into its higher purpose. One thing I want to touch on before we get going with line four is that what that necessarily means is what you're calling in is what you need. And a lot of times we have a hard time accepting that. We're battling against it. We think we're better than what's coming in. I raise my hand because that's where I'm at right now. We don't trust in what the universe is providing to us. I was listening to a podcast with Rick Rubin and um, the woman who does a lot of stuff with Course and Miracles. I wanna say her name is Marianne. I'm drawing a blank right now though. Doesn't matter. What's important is in that book, she talks about God coming to you via another person. The reason that the other person in front of you is that person is teaching you something. They're here to give you something. And your job is to open to that thing as opposed to getting annoyed and turning away. And it's the same with situations in your life. Those things are getting attracted into your life for a purpose. And this is what we say, every shadow contains a gift. It's your job to unpack that thing that's coming, that thing that feels like a rock in your shoe and learn what is the true value in it and how can I respond in a way that raises my frequency higher instead of something that continues to keep my frequency where it is or even spiral me downward. And so this sphere takes a lot of ownership. It takes a lot of hard look inside of our own hearts, inside of our own minds and, and acceptance of I am put myself here and I can choose to show up in a way that gets me closer to alignment with my soul's journey and my soul's purpose. So on to line four now. The keynotes here are frigidity and romance and the way of being in the world is either distant or intimate. And frigidity here, just a quick definition is just emotional distance. It's being cold or feeling cold with somebody. And the key to bringing that feeling back is self-parenting. And every single line needs to understand the idea of self-parenting. When you get better awareness around your body and you can feel your heart close off to the world, that has a lot to do with your sphere of SQ, but it also shows up here for everyone in the sphere of attraction. You have to figure out what it is you need to get your heart to open back up to the world. Sometimes that means taking some time alone. Sometimes that means engaging in something social. Sometimes that means um, doing something that could be seen as shadowy, right? There's a big difference between doing something that you know is taking you back to peace and doing something that, and when I say shadowy, I mean it could be seen as society as shadowy, but for you, it's something that returns you back to peace. And that's knowing yourself and deconditioning yourself from the programming that's happening. So we have to learn how to parent ourselves and to open our heart. And when you feel the juice dry up in a relationship. Remember, this sphere is ultimately and intimately tied to sexuality, which is the same life force that gives us creativity. It took me a long time to understand the link there, but it's just desire, it's emotion, it's the things that light us up, the things that, that, that drive us to take action, to make us move in the world. All of that is the same force. And so if you feel a, a pulling back, a, a distance, a frigidity happening, that is the fourth line wound. And what allows you to get back in it is to see the higher purpose of the other person involved in the situation. A lot of times why we've pulled back is we've been triggered by 
another person or they're not showing up in the way that you want them to show up. And so we start to resign ourselves back to create some distance to try and protect ourselves. But the only time you can protect yourself is if you see yourself as totally separate from the person across from you. And if you can accept your partner's shadow, if you can accept that that shadow is going to lead them to a gift and both of you are there with one another together to pull that out of each other, that's how we start to build the romance back in. That's how we start to get warm again. It keeps the love, it keeps away the resentment. And fours, when you're in shadow, you are not friendly like you're supposed to. Remember, this is the line of community, the line of service. It's what draws um, different communities and groups of people together. And when you are in your shadow as a fourth line, the opposite happens. People want to stay apart from you. You feel cold. You feel distant. And it freezes the hearts around you instead of warming the hearts around you and opening them up to one another. And the fourth line manifests largely through tone. So if you're in a relationship, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. The other person can say one word or say something that uh, to another human that's not involved in this relationship would not matter to them at all. But you know that person's tone so well and they know how to use that tone. That is a very fourth line thing. The way that you say things makes a big difference. So you need to be aware of it. Otherwise, you're gonna close the other person's heart before you even have a chance to interact with one another because that tone is going to trigger the other person. And honestly, you're already shut down yourself if you're talking in that tone and that that's doomed from the beginning. Remember, relationships are a mirror. So if you're feeling cold from the other person, you've got something cold going on inside of you. Um, it's important that we turn all of these things back inward. We've got to let go of our blame. It's your distance that's making this happen. And so it's time to get into that self-parenting mode, asking yourself what you need to come out of it. Romancing yourself is really what this keynote means here. Of course, fourth lines are going to respond to somebody else coming in and making them feel special and important and love. However, at a deeper level, it's about learning how to romance yourself, learning how to love yourself, because it takes that to let another person come in, to let another person come close. Otherwise, your heart is going to keep them at a distance. If you're familiar with The Five Love Languages, which is a great book, if you haven't read it, you should definitely check it out. One of them is Words of Affirmation, and that is a very fourth line uh, love language. So if you are a fourth line or if you're with a fourth line, know that giving words of praise, words of encouragement, words of love are very important to you or to your partner. Because remember, the fourth line is breath. It's communication. So it's important for you to talk it out. You are here to spread love as a fourth line in community, to build groups, partnerships, networks of people, and to connect them to one another. All right, on to line five, we've got entrapment and sensuality, and the way of being in the world is manipulative or masterful. Remember, all lines, all keys have a repressed and a reactive expression, and the repressed line five is a victim of their own self-esteem. They get stuck worrying what other people think about them. And that dictates all of their actions in life. They want other people to like them. They want to be perceived a different way because they don't think they're good enough. And that leads to manipulation because if you don't think you're good enough, you're manipulating that other person to see you in the way that you want to be seen. You're obsessed with pleasing others, even if it's at your own expense. And you're caught in this false mental pattern that is caused by your fears. That's where all of this is coming from. 
you develop this belief at some point when you were young, some point, certainly zero to 21, more than likely zero to seven, maybe up until 14, but you see the world in a very certain way. And it's like you have glasses on and you cannot see those glasses. And so as a fourth line, we've got to work on noticing that false mental projection as a react or excuse me, as a fifth line, as a reactive fifth line, you use sex as manipulation. You use sex to gain power. You use sex for the purpose of politics to get what you want. It might not necessarily be the sexual act, but you're using your sexuality to manipulate, to gain ground, to gain traction, just even a little bit of flirting with whoever to allow this thing to open up to you. That is this fifth line at a lower frequency. But below that facade is a deep fear of intimacy, a deep fear of connection with another person. And it's self-delusion that leads to this insecurity. It's your belief that you're not worthy, that you're, you're deluding yourself from the love that is at the core of you. And that leads to this insecurity because you don't believe it's there, you believe that the other person is going to see the flaw in you. When you admit and feel your vulnerability, you turn into a totally different person as a fifth line. We start to feel that sensuality. You start to get masterful with your sexuality, masterful with the creative energy that's popping up. And waking up for a fifth line can be very dramatic because it is a new way of seeing the world. And oftentimes it happens in a flash, in a moment. And all of a sudden you get this shock of like, holy crap, everything I saw the whole time was wrong. And you can see the drivers behind things and that can be terrifying. So if that happens to you, slow down. <laughs> Don't do anything fast. Um, make sure that you get accustomed to this new way of seeing the world before you take any action because you might regret it. Inherently, it's you have this sensuality, which is different from sexuality, right? Sensuality is much more playful. It's much more uh, innocent. It's much more pure. It... it causes people to let their guard down and to just realize that there's something unique and something different about you. And that is what makes you magnetic to other people. I always talk about this fifth line magnetism. It's that inherent sensuality that draws people closer to you. Now it's very important as a fifth line that you have very clear boundaries. People see you as special. People feel that sensuality. And if they don't haven't done some work, they might think that it's coming across as sexuality. It's a very fine line. And so clear boundaries, making sure everybody's on the same page and understands is an important part for fifth lines. You have to learn to accept your power as a fifth line rather than being its victim, letting it decide when it wants to expand and when it wants to contract. You stay in control. You decide what aligns with your values, what aligns with what you're trying to do instead of chasing this deeper emotion. Remember, there's desire, but the counter to that is commitment. And we need both of those things for this to work well. Integrated fives use sensuality with mastery. They know how to influence. They know how to get other people to listen to them, but it's not manipulation. It's speaking to their heart. It's feeling this deep, playful, loving um, nature that a fifth line has that gets other people to take action with them. Sexuality, like I said, becomes sensuality. It becomes playful, loving, and mysterious, but without being misleading or seductive. And internally, it really leads to a powerful healing of a relationship and of sexuality when you're tapped into this deep, deep level of 
just this deep well of energy that's driving so much of our behavior in the world. And when we take a real look at it, you'll recognize that. It, take me, it took me a long time to get this. So that's the fifth line, entrapment and sensuality. And now finally moving on to the sixth line, we've got disappointment and innocence and the way of being in the world is resigned and ecstatic. And this is my line in the sphere of attraction. So I'm a 29.6. And here sixes can feel the weight of the other five lines, always. That's why their journey takes a little bit longer. They need to understand everyone else because they're the vision holders. They're deciding where we're going. And in order to know where we're going, you have to know where you're coming from. Vision requires experience. And it's probably confusing for six lines because you have that vision but it takes time to manifest. Remember, six line key is patience, surrender. And so you have this vision and you just want so desperately for it to come true and it just doesn't show up. Or worse, it shows up and it gets pulled back away from you. And both of these lead to a deep disappointment. That's the lower frequency here. It's this, I have this vision and it won't come to reality or I thought I was gonna get this thing and then it got ripped away from me. And that leaves just this empty resignation, this feeling of wanting to give up. But sixes at some core level cannot let go of the vision. So they, they end up thinking that their vision, their goal, their desire, their drive is unrealistic. And that causes this resignation. They give up. The problem with that is they can only give up mentally, maybe emotionally, but you are designed as a six to hold this vision in your cells. And so this split starts to happen where mentally we don't think it's gonna happen, but physically in our body, we know that it's possible. We know that it's true. And so when we can't manifest the vision, we, we get sad, we get angry, we get indifferent, which is another six line keynote here. You're just like, it's, the world is the world and I can't get what I want in it, so I'm not going to be a part of it. And when you feel that deep disappointment, what you need to learn, what you're here to learn as a six line is patience and perspective. You've got to accept what you have in all of the lines here in the sphere of attraction. That's what I was talking about when I opened this video. You've got to accept what you have. You're the reason you have what you have. So start there. Remember, life is being your teacher in every moment. And at the same time, we've got to strive for more. So it's this dichotomy, it's this split, this paradox that always comes up with the sixth line. Really, all wisdom teachings, because as we get closer to the truth, the truth is paradox, right? Quantum physics gets us right to the edge and then everything falls apart. Physics gets us right to the edge of Big Bang and then everything falls apart because the universe is paradox. And so striving for more means using this impulse that you have that is innate and learning, growing, evolving. That impulse isn't designed to be repressed. We've got to use it for fuel. And that's what your relationships are doing. They're teaching you. They're getting you closer to manifesting that vision. You've got to keep the faith, please, as a sixth line. We are the only way it's going to change. And I say it, our society, the world, all of the other five lines depend on us to bring the future into the now. It's up to the other lines to execute. And the six lines are no more important than any of the other five. Each of us have our role, but sixes are gonna, what's gonna start to turn the ship in a big way. And what you need is not from your partner, it's from you. So it's not your partner that's keeping you from the vision, always, all of the lines, turning it inward. If you were open enough, you would allow your partner to be where they are. They don't need to do anything. You don't need to change them. Your vision 
um, encompasses allowing other people to be how they are. We need to become the model of open heartedness that we feel in our core. We need to live in the way that we want others to live. That's the vision piece. It's not talking it. That's part of it. But ultimately, living it is what matters all the time. Not just when you're meditating, not just when you're doing yoga, not just when you're putting on a show for somebody, all the time living what we're preaching. I try to do that at a deep level. I'm certainly not perfect at it, but I don't just talk about this stuff. So your job is to dream of experiencing a greater love and making sure that you're transforming inwardly and not blaming the external world and everything that's happening around you. You need to use every fear that you have, every piece of guilt that you have, every bit of anger as a way to focus your self-love inwardly, as a way to bring your gifts to the world. And that leads to being ecstatic. It leads to joy. It leads to innocence. It leads to going back to being a child. All right, that's it for our six lines. Um, this will be our studio for the next couple weeks. And then we move again. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you like splitting it into two parts like this. This one I kind of had to. It was just long. Um, this is a deep one. Like I said, there's a lot going on here. So we'll see you next time.